What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 11 of a Lizanac. We're back and it's well the French Cup today. It's a bit of a, a weird episode, an uno reverse of an episode perhaps because today we start with a match. Yes, of course, last episode, a huge live comp double header against two of the big teams in the division. We came through those two fixtures with flying colours and we knew that a French Cup fixture awaited. We we're going to be taking on Ajaxio. Uh, they, if I'm not mistaken, have appeared relatively high up the French footballing pyramid. In fact, you can see way back in 2015-16, they played in Ligue 1. Since then, they've tumbled down the leagues a little bit. They currently sit in the French third tier. But nevertheless... It's a tricky game for us today, and well, because we've not played any games since we played it our last game, uh, the plan today essentially is to play this game first, then play forward a few months, come back, well, maybe, you know, see how we get on, and uh, we'll just do the episode in reverse, if that makes sense. Observant people may notice, Jack, you're wearing the same shirt as the video that went up yesterday. I am. That was morning, Jack. This is evening, Jack. I'm wiser, slightly sweatier, endured more of the British heatwave, but... I'm just as ready to fight and just as ready to dance. And, well, Ajaxio is not an easy game. It's not an easy game, is it? The French Cup, where everyone plays everyone, we come in with excellent form. Their form, pr pretty, pretty meh. They've won two of their last five and lost three of them. In terms of our team for today's game, I think I'm going to go with the squad that played that last game of uh, last episode. It's a very good team. We won 3-0 against one of the big dogs in the league. I'm hoping that Embukani and Farfan, with a little bit of a, a sprinkling of, uh, well, experience. I don't know what this is about, sprinkling. Uh, we've got a plate of our team, the Luzanak plate, and they're just there. They're the, they're the bit you put on top and put at the top and hope they do magical things. Farfan's physicals continue to decline. He still looks scared. Um, I'm hoping that they're going to be the, the torch and carrying the, the beacon of hope, I suppose, in this game. I did have a look at a Jaxio's kind of key player. And I will be honest, Embakani's a lot better than their best player. Unfortunately, there's only one of Embakani, and their whole squad is a lot more consistent. Their key player is apparently Wilfred Kanga. If we just compare him to Embakani, you can see here, yes, he's a bit quicker and a bit more physical and a bit better defensively, but Embakani's got the mentals of like a Buddhist monk, and he's got the jumping reach of a basketball player. So, Who's the real winner? Uh, I won't talk about what he has the first touch off because that could go into demonetization zone. Shall we get into today's game? Let's submit the team. Very, very... Oh, no. You only get five subs in this competition and I've just submitted a bench. Oh, wait. No, do you get seven subs and I've submitted five? Oh, I don't know. I thought I had, but then they've only got five players on the bench as well. I, I wish I could rewind time and find out what dialogue box I hit OK on. We've all been there. You're playing Football Manager in autopilot and you just click on a box without thinking. If, you, if you've played Football Manager and never kind of selected the incorrect number of players on the bench, maybe you've had some players left out of the match squad, maybe you've just left the bench empty. If you've never done either of those things, are you really a Football Manager player at that point? I would say you're not. And while this is a big game for us, of course, at our temporary home stadium in Rodez, I actually don't know if Rodez is the name of the place. It's certainly the name of the team that play there, so we'll just call it Rodez's place, I suppose. A Janxio, though, a good team, but we're going to try and make the most of our set pieces, the most of our physicality. Of course, we've got Embakani, who's just a weapon up front. Unfortunately for us, they've got Kanga, their key man, and he is breaking, and he's quite blooming quick. Look at him go. Sprints through, smashes it wide. I feel like I've just bigged him up there and cursed him. Maybe I should do that more often, the curse of the commentator. If it's such a thing that exists, I need to learn to harness the power of it. Uh, a Jake Jaxio on the attack again here. 50-50% of the ball. We had some of the shots early on, but this is the second highlight with them in possession. And while we try to cover it, we don't cover it. And Yon Mavungo, or Mavungo, I will just call you Yon, it's easier. He scored for them. A nice little finish, to be fair, into the far corner. I feel like we've let ourselves down just a little bit there. And, uh, well, you can see the ball threaded through superbly in behind us. We try and cover it. We can't cover it. Could Gibert have done a little better there? Maybe. 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 I'm not sure. Right, well, we've got to try and bounce back now. You might as well get shouty, shouty. Boys, I'm enduring in the heat. You can endure on the pitch. Come on. Show me what you're made of. Show me what you got. It is incredible that Embakani is uninterested and tired. Like, both of those things in one. You kind of think a player who'd be uninterested wouldn't be running around much. Apparently, he is running around more than most. I guess also, he hasn't got the best stamina or fitness. So, 
that's probably a factor as well. I mean, at the break, it's only 1-0. Considering that they are in, you know, a, well, two leagues ahead of us, this is a pretty, you know, decent a fight that we put up so far. Maybe fight is generous, but, well, we're on the offensive here, although they have hit us on the break once, and I thought they were going to hit us on the break again there, but Karim Buali read it like a book. He knows this book. And, uh, well, Farfan, penalty? Penalty? We'll, we'll take that, and it's going to be Farfan to take it. He was fouled by Anaba. The ball was switched over. That was a penalty out of nothing, an unnecessary mistake, an unnecessary... Well, one to give away, and Farfan, oh my word, in off the post, there, there's the sprinkling, sprinkle it with me everyone, don't, don't do it if your girlfriend or your wife, or even like your kids or your pets are around, they will be confused as to what you're doing, but I don't know, Farfan is seasoning the Luzanak dish, it's 1-1, one, one. man, I'm getting hungry, I feel like my, my hunger is seeping through into the commentary of this game. They've got a chance here through Lapini. He whips it towards the back post and, oh my word, I couldn't tell if that was in or not. This camera angle is usually a bit potato on corners. There was a heart-in-mouth moment there where I wasn't sure. It did go over. And I mean, with an hour gone, besides the fact our entire defence is booked, things aren't that bad. I'm going to take off Karen Buardi for Bru Girard just because he's on a booking. He's not having a very good game. El Mutaki's been a bit quiet out on the left, so let's take him off. I'm going to bring in Sega Kieta. And actually looking at it, I think a few of our players on the bench are missing now, now that I've noticed it. It's a five-man bench instead of a seven-man. That's what the message said. Right as I look for Nguala and he's just not there. You remember, oh no, we left him on the bus. When we left, you know, when we left to go to the ground, he was left behind. That dialogue box, it was just telling us that Nguala wasn't going to be ready. And well, we've, le we've left him in the dirt. I'm hoping he can forgive me. I mean, it's still 1-1 here. There is part of me that wishes I'd read up on what the rules are for a replay or extra time or any of that jazz. I, equally, I didn't think it was going to happen. As on oh my word, Castiang has a free kick from range. He scored a few of them this year in the league. That one saved by the keeper. Luzanak continuing to go on the offensive here. Keita with the corner, cleared away, Mbakani smashes it over the woodwork, we're knocking on the door, he's used the knocking on the door analogy again, I'll tell you what it is, I've been playing too much Fall Guys, you know, with the door game where you have to run through the doors, if, you, if you're sat there going, what is Fall Guys, twitch.tv forward slash work the space, the greatest game on earth, some would say, Farfan, Mbakani, of course, second greatest, football manager's number one, um, yeah, just, just worth clarifying. We've got one last sub to use. I've not used it. What happens now? Extra blooming time. Maybe it's a good job I saved that sub. Although at this point, it would be quite nice to have Nguala to bring onto the pitch. Because, well, Mbukani, he, he is struggling at this point. But he's he's still quite good. I feel like below 60% condition under any other circumstances would be a immediate, right, sub him off, protect him, wrap him in bubble wrap. But for us today, Mbukani is a one in a million player. We don't really have anyone like him, mostly because of my own doing in not including the late last two players on my bench in the match squad. Of course, because it's a five-man bench and I had seven players selected and I'm a normal, rational human being who numbers and l lists my sub in, subs in order of position, the players at the bottom that have gone missing are all the attacking options. So... If we fail here, it is all on me. Uh, I am going to bring in Chinchilla, I think, for Castiang. Looking across the board, everyone is a little bit tired. I don't think... Oh, I was about to say, I don't think we get another sub here. We actually do. Bilek, come off. Let's bring in Lazmi. With our last change, just still scared of the sending off at the back. Hugo Robert now the only player on the pitch for us with a yellow card. And, uh, well, one half of extra time has not been able to split things. Is the second going to be able to do it? 15 minutes... And this is the bit where the fact that we're amateur, the fact we don't train in midweek, could well catch up with us because they've got a well, they've got the ball and they could have a chance here. Ball switched over, flicked over to Pelé, knocks it round Lazmi, who's just come on off the bench. The keeper, though, oh my word, Gibert. G G what a player. What a player in goal. That was absolutely nuts to get fingertips to it. Mr. One on ones, they call him, and then he tips it over the woodwork again. Beat your chest. Do the goalkeeper thing where they scream, come on. You know the one I'm on about. The, the noise that goalkeepers make. Make that noise, Gaber. You deserve to be able to celebrate. I mean, it'd be nice if the whole team was allowed to celebrate. Could we make something happen on the break here? Saban, Tafarfan. All their names rhyme. And by all of their names, I mean two of their names rhyme. Go back to Saban, Farfan. He, he does. And now it's with Bar to Chinchilla. Now with Keita. 
or should I say Sega. He's not been at the races today, although he's at the races now. Embercarney back to goal, Farfan, dispossessed. Saban though with it. Dinks it for Keita, Sega, Sega, Sega. If I keep saying his name, he'll score. He's hit the woodwork. It's gone out off the post. Oh, my word. We've had an entertaining game, at least. I was a little bit worried that we would either come into this game and get spanked, or it would be a really boring 1-0 defeat. I wasn't ever really expecting us to beat this team here. I'll tell you what. We've given them a blooming good game. Yes, they've had more chances. Yes, they've probably been the better team. We have relied on a penalty to get our only goal. But we're, we're making a meal of it. We're holding them back. We're causing them problems. I will say with seven minutes left, I don't want to lose this now. The heartbreak would be too much. Equally, penalties do scare me. Anaba, big ball over. Lazmi heads it down, but they've still got the ball. A Pelican's got it. The Pelican v the Chinchilla. Oh, Bruce Girard. He's given away a penalty to them now. And all lines are on Mr. One-on-Ones. Please. JB steps up, Gibert saves it again, oh my word, take us to the penalty shootout, ref, blow the whistle now, Gibert's ready, he's ready, he is like a bear, some say he got his name from wrestling one, ball whipped in, Lazmi away, Pelican, stop this football manager, the heroics have been done now, the narrative is sealed, we've had the final chapter, we don't need this little extra bit on the end, you're ruining it now. It's like Shrek 4. Completely unnecessary. Unless, unless it turns out to be good and it's a goal for us as Saban. Well, we, he's earned us a, a throw in. Well, that means a great deal as they now have a free kick. I'm panicking. We need to defend this. Lots of players in the box. Nice block. Embakani. Embakani. With your 40 condition. Run, my friend. Sega. Players are lining up in the middle. He might go on his own. Sega hits it. It deflects in off Chinchilla's forehead. He doesn't have a Scooby-Doo what he's done there. He does not know what's just happened. I know what's happened. It's hit him in the face completely by accident and deflected into the net. What a beautiful way to get through this game if this is indeed the way it's going to be done. Playing sexy football, a penalty and a deflection. Oh, Jubert. Jubert, Jubert, Jubert. Give him a trophy. Give him a medal. Give him a bottle of wine. I don't know. What a game. What a performance. The goal is not really a classic. But I am quite proud of it, boys. That is not what I envisaged the French Cup 8th round was going to look like. We're into the ninth round, everyone. I don't know when the big teams enter. Are there any big teams in it now? Uh, affiliates Nancy were in it. Looking at it, some of the big teams are in it. We, we could have an exciting game on our hands. I don't know when the cup draw is, and this episode was entirely planned around the fact we weren't going to get through, because um, I didn't really expect it. Right, the game is only in a short little period of time, so I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to jump forward. We're going to do that game as well. I may well record it tomorrow. I may be wearing a different shirt, but I'll tell you what, what a result that is. Let's do it again, shall we? Let's go. Okay, guys, so we are back here for the French Cup ninth round. That's not a sentence I thought I was going to be saying at the start of this recording. Welcome to 2021, and the team that we are playing is... US Orléans. Um, that's almost certainly mispronounced. We're playing them at home. They are a Ligue 2 side. They play in the second tier of France. Not a bad little team. All of their players have faces. They've got quite a nice looking badge with a wasp on it. Very intimidating stuff. And well, look, they dress like wasps too. We're going to have to be at our best today. Um, in terms of since you were last here, we have played two games in the league. Uh, and those two games were two okay results, I suppose. Not the, mo the most of goals. Uh, the first game against AS Moret, we won 1-0. Uh, it was Embakani with the goal in the 82nd minute. We rotated the team, very nearly backfired. But on off the bench came Embakani, Farfan and El Mutaki. We got the goal, and well, in the second game, again, a late goal required, or a, a later goal required. It was in the second half. It wasn't wasn't that late, really. Uh, they got the early lead through a set piece, and while we replied for a set piece, it was Barane Bar with the volley into the top of the net, into the roof of the net. A draw, not ideal. However, with other teams slipping up around us, we still remain eight points clear at the top of the French National Free, which, well, our own regional French National Free. Of course, the French National Free is actually lots of different divisions. But at the moment, we sit top dog and we sit very, very pretty. Especially when you realise there's only 11 games left of the season. Um, this short season is really playing with my mind. Anyway, Cup game is the focus, of course. And as I already alluded to, we are taking on a team who are a pretty blooming good. Um, 
clearly this wasn't quite how I imagined this episode was going to go. There is some stuff that I wanted to talk about. We're going to save that, I think, for the next episode. Um, don't worry, we're not going to continue just playing French Cup after French Cup game throughout this episode. There isn't another hour on the end of this video, I hope, where we've made it to the finals and won. If there is, then I've... I've I don't know. Something's gone wrong, basically, because we're ending it after this game. We'll come back for a 10th round if we absolutely need to. And, uh, well, US, Lorient, they've got a few players missing. We have no players missing. I will just quickly say, we've had some players poached away from us, which is a little bit of a shame. Most of these, I'm not too bothered about young prospects who I wasn't really sure were going to make it. Although, Mike Weibel, we have lost. He was one of the better products of the last intake, although you can see here... His potential ability perhaps isn't that great. He's gone to the CFFP, who have a horrible colour setup of this red and blue that is actually hurting my eyes. Let's leave the player profile. Jeez. I need to be able to see for the match today. And while well, speaking of the match today, before night time, Jack, if you didn't realise, this is night time, Jack. It's dark outside. The lights are keeping me awake that are shining on me from all directions. I'm like evening, Jack, but more tired. Um, night time, Jack, is going to try and get a result here. We're taking on US Lorient. At home, or I've, I've said Lorion there. We're not taking on Lorion, we're taking on Olion. It's two completely different teams. Uh, but in terms of team news, the fantastic bit of news to tell you is no injuries, no worries. This is pretty much a full strength team, and uh, I hope we have seven subs now. And it looks like actually at this stage in the cup, they add in an extra sub, which I suppose works. It, we'll, we'll use it if we need to. That does mean that Enguala, uh, well, yeah, Enguala, um, Mutaki, and Shane. You will notice Shanae has now officially been nicknamed Willy. Um, I felt like it had to be done after last episode. If you're sat under not understanding why he's now called Willy, well, um, I suggest you go back and watch yesterday's video. Anyway, let's get into this, shall we? Oh, my word. They are playing a 4-2-3-1. They're a team who are very, very good. They are a struggler in their own league, but the bottom line is they are three divisions above us, and having taken on a team who were in the league below them, we scraped by a little fortuitously. I can play it off. I can pretend it was super comfortable that last game. Let's be honest. Benjamin Gilbert is a hero, a saint, and it's one of the heroic work the space goalkeeper performances up there with the likes of Joe Hands. I feel like we need to get a little goalkeeper hall of fame. But to make that save after so many other saves from that penalty was huge. Unfortunately, seven minutes into this, Nougas got them off to a, a good start. Um, he's not made a save there as Gilbert, the curse, maybe we've cursed him by <laughs> bigging him up, to be fair, free header near post was not particularly great defending, um, not, not one to put down in the how to coach manual, I feel like they're defending there, or the how to defend ma manual, the hand how to coach manual will be available in all good stores very soon, written by yours truly, um, to be clear, it's not an actual thing, I know someone will take it too seriously. <laughs> Imagine me writing a book. That's a terrifying idea. Anyway, Lotte, huge tackle by Sabam. I think it's far fun on this right-hand side. Indeed it is. He's chasing back. He's making a lot of effort to try and cover up for Karim Buali, who has had his lack of athleticism exposed there. Um, he has declined quite a lot recently. Oh, my word. It hurts to look at. It, don't, don't look at it, Jack. Move your mouse away. Hide it. He's still got a long throw in his locker. And while Mbakani's unmarked, Castiang might have been offside there. Unfortunately, he couldn't get onto the second ball regardless. Nice little flick on by Mbukani. You can see it. In the first 20 minutes of this game, we've had 64% of the ball. We are playing the Luzanak way. We are trying to dominate possession. We're trying to play it out from the back where we can. Well, we're going to try and do it again here through Farfan. Inside to Mbukani. Now it's a ban. Bar. Keita. What can he do here? Gives it to Castian. Blocked. Farfan's there, though. Farfan's there, though. And he can't find the target. Tried to squeeze it in at the near post. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. I think he probably should have shot it across goal. But a great chance for us. The first great opportunity we've had. And they are going to deal with the resulting corner. Despite being a goal down, and it was from a set piece, we've been really good in this game so far. They are playing a 4-2-3-1 with two defensive mids, though. Which could make them a bit tricky to break down. and makes me wonder if they're going to try and catch us out. As they have another chance here. This time, shot goes narrowly wide. I think that Gilbert did have that one covered. But having already conceded one set piece against US Orléans, there is just that lingering concern, that lingering doubt that, um, well, they could catch us out again from another set piece. I mean, at the break, it's only 1-0, so we are very much in this. And to be fair, it's been a very heroic performance so far. 
going to tell the players I expect a better showing. A few players didn't react perfectly to it, but on the whole, it was a good little reaction. And while we've got a chance here through Sega, who's going to whip it in. Robert, free header, Hugo Robert, using that giraffe neck of his. 50% neck, that man. Go and celebrate it. The vice captain wheels away in celebration and a nice little corner routine has worked for us there. Sega getting it in at the near post. Robert leaps high, leaps tall, glancing header across. Really nice header actually to direct that in. And it's 1-1. We've been in the better team and I don't want to speak too soon here. I don't want to get carried away just yet. I think we could win this yet. Yeah, I think we could win this yet. I'm bigging us up now. Maybe the blood's going to my head. Maybe the heat has finally got to me as Karen Buali launches it through. Embakani, Saban hits it over the crossbar. I mean, he didn't. He hit it well, just too well, really. It flew over in the end. 15 minutes left. I probably should be making some subs. That's usually what managers do around this part. Farfan's been quiet out on the right-hand side, so let's bring in Willie Shanine. Elsewhere on the team, Embakani, I've not been wowed by you today, mate. I'm taking you off for Mutaki. And I think for now, we'll hold on to our remaining sub or two. I think we get another one if it goes to extra time. But yeah, five minutes left plus added time. Still in the balance. And, uh, well, is there a late sting in the tail? Do you get, they've got a wasp on their badge. It's genius. They've got a corner, though. We need to defend this. We need to deal with this. Headed out by El Mutaki. Then Robert helps on his way. But now with Perrin, whips it in. And, oh, my word, they've scored another set piece. Francesco Antonucci with it. And with that, we have to react. We have just let ourselves down defensively, just from an organization, organizational standpoint on both of these. Obviously, the first goal conceded from a corner. This one, less directly so from a corner, but ultimately just down to no one picking up their men. You can see here so many options in the middle. And in fact, there wasn't because they all started running out. But the one man who was an option in the middle heads it goalwards. We've gone more attacking. We've rolled the dice here. But with minutes left, they've not given us any time to reply. And it's a good wrenching defeat which i don't want to acknowledge i don't want to look at oh that's heartbreaking i feel like we were the better team there as well i thought we played a really really good game against them a ninth round defeat is better than our previous expectations there is a rule in this competition that you do have to play um you know most of your players from the previous game you can't intentionally field a weaker team so they played a full strength team and well to just take a look at antonucci here He's pretty good, isn't he? On loan from Monaco, and he's the man who scores that goal. We can't really compete with that, can we? We can't. He's being paid two thousand four hundred pounds. Our team total get paid nothing. But for how much longer they'll get paid nothing, I guess, is a, a completely different question. Um, you can see here the overall bank balance has dropped just a little bit. Worth noting, I have had some recent board requests granted, so we've got a few more staff members in every category. But the big things of note. Coaching course for us, fantastic news. Junior coaching budget increased, great news. And the best bit of news, our youth recruitment has been improved for the second time this season. That was done uh, at the start of December. That is really, really big, especially as we are going to have a youth intake in just a few weeks' time. I say a few weeks, it's a few months, but because of how the fixtures are spaced out now and we're, with us having nothing left to play for but the league, um, I do imagine the next episode we might do a little bit of a youth intake special. Um, it's going to be some time in March, that date exactly to be decided. I suppose we will find out in due course. But anyway, not a bad little distraction today's episode. Not quite how I envisaged today's episode. I was thinking we'd play the one game, we would lose against a team in a much higher division, and that would be that. As it stands, a bit of a heroic performance. And then even in this second leg, to lose against a team who are in the second division, albeit you know a very comfortably mid-table second division team, and to lose like that, I don't know, that, that makes me feel pretty good about our longer-term aspirations to really kind of grow and hopefully, you know, before too long, be back in League Dirt. Of course, that is the division that Luzanak were denied entry to. Still a few years away, still a few promotions away, but already got it, got it in my sights. Got it in my sights. Well, hopefully, it's going to be in your sights and in your eyes. That sounds very painful. What I mean is you're going to get to see it in the coming weeks and months uh, here on the channel. Which, of course, just a reminder, if you've somehow stumbled across this and this is your first video, which probably 
in truth, is applying to about one of you. So if you're that person, make sure you're subbed. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel, let me know with a comment. Uh, likes also help out massively. It gives me a good idea that you guys are enjoying and in, well, watching the content. And, uh, well, that is going to be all from me today. As I said, next time, a youth intake special. Take care. Have fun. Nighttime Jack is going to go and sleep. And I will see you guys again tomorrow. I'm out. I've got my outro for a second there. Disaster. Absolute bloody disaster.